Good to meet Fred. We'll flash forward to tonight. <laughs> now the Orange County School Board will be voting on whether to allow cross-dressing and also transgender teachers in the classroom. A lot more complicated than that as well. Absolutely. Up for a vote is a new policy that would prevent discrimination based on sexual orientation, gender identity, or genetic identity. It would literally allow men or boys to wear dresses to school if they so choose. A change that parents we talked to are a little leery about. Imagine a preschool or a kindergarten student uh, witnessing Mr. Smith become Miss Smith over the course of a year. That policy would apply to teachers and to students. Very controversial, as you can imagine. So we brought in representatives on both sides this morning to talk about it. John Stenberger of the Florida Family Policy Council is here this morning. They're talking about why they think this is a bad idea. And Democratic State Representative Joe Saunders in support of the policy. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here this morning. It's good to be here. Thanks for having Obviously, me. it is very controversial, but it is something that we are facing in this century. It, let's talk a little bit about it. First, from your standpoint, John, what are your thoughts on this issue coming up tonight? Two policies that they're looking at. Sure. Well, I think it's entirely inappropriate. You know, if people want to do this on their private time, that's fine. But public schools is no place for social experimentation with children. And if a second grade teacher, Sam, has to turn into Sally, that shouldn't happen in elementary school or high school or any other place. The school needs to focus on reading, writing, and arithmetic, the basics, and stop this nonsense of pandering to a special interest group. John, how serious of an issue is this that this is something that they have to actually enact a policy about? You know, well, Amy, I'm going to start by just pushing back a little bit on the way that this issue has been characterized. This is a non-discrimination policy uh, that is not new. This is not new language. This is not a new idea. In fact, when Orange County creates this policy, they'll be joining the ranks of the largest school districts in the state of Florida, Hillsborough County, Pinellas County, Broward, Miami-Dade. They'll be joining a majority of Fortune 500 companies across the country who have created policies just like this. And they'll be joining uh, Orange County, which three years ago created a law that protects people who live, work, or visit Orange County with the exact same language. The only thing that this does. It says that no student will ever have to choose uh, between their safety and whether or not to come to school and no teacher, faculty, or staff member in Orange County Public Schools will ever have to worry about if they're going to be fired from their job because of who they are. That's Look, the baseline I, I, for it. It, it, it doesn't, matter, it it doesn't does. matter to me who's doing this at other schools. It's nonsense. It shouldn't be happening. You know, we should be protecting children. You know, I got these off of Joe's website. Here's what they say right here. Can I show you this right here? Yeah, we're pulling it back up. There you go. They're, they're protecting, they're talking about protecting teachers, and that's fine, but there's nowhere that they're talking about protecting students or protecting our young people. It's children that we need to be concerned about, their welfare, their safety, their protection, not the interest of a radical minority you know, or a Amy, special me, interest group. Let me tell you how this conversation started. This, this, this whole process began when teachers who teach kids in our school, some of which who teach and uh, work and live in my district, went to the school district and said, we see children who, are, who don't don't feel safe in our schools and we don't feel like we can protect them because we don't feel safe because Orange County hasn't joined the ranks of all the other major school districts the largest school districts in the state and calling out this kind of discrimination you know what there's been no this, evidence this at all there's been no evidence district. of all of any issues with this there's you know what there's no evidence with, of any of the things incidents. that John accuses uh, happening all of these scenarios that he's painted that he's he's the politics of fear that he has infused into this community uh, is all based on things that don't happen things that aren't true. The only thing that this policy says is that a student should never feel like they can't come to school because they don't feel safe, and no teacher should ever, ever feel like they're going to be fired from their job because of who they are. Look, it's the, the baseline is for the, the conversation, policy is in and black the district and is white. empowered to create okay. policy based on that. A principal does not have the ability to reassign or to fire a teacher in a second grade, third grade, or elementary school if Sam becomes Sally through gender reassignment, through cross-dressing, whatever. That's clear on the face of the statute. And that's inappropriate. It should not be happening in public schools. We should be educating our children, not engaging in social experimentation. The, the Orange County public school system ought to be ashamed of themselves for even bringing this forward. It's absurd. Orange County public schools should be excited. They should be proud of the fact that they are joining the ranks of major school districts across the state and country, of Fortune 500 companies that have have created policies like these decades ago and of Orange County government that created a law just like this three years ago. None of the you, you scenarios know what? that John parents, likes to bring are, up have happened in Orange County. None parents, of them have happened in any of the school districts the across the state. He is a, he loves to 
to pop his head up out of a <laughs> hole whenever these policies start to get debated right, and we're use a politics attacks. of fear into these communities. He right, lies no, about I, it. It doesn't happen. This makes parents, people safer and Parents students. will have the final say tonight at 530, and you'll see that they are overwhelmingly not in favor of this policy. Teachers don't favor it. The students don't favor it. The faculty is not even aware of it. This is a surprise attempt by the school board, and this is going I predict this is going to be dead tonight. The fact that John just started paying attention doesn't mean that this conversation hasn't been happening with the school district for almost two years now. This, this policy will make students safer. It will make teachers better equipped to create a, a, a strong educational environment, and it's about basic fairness in our school district. All right, gentlemen, That's I hate to cut you off. Does. It's definitely an interesting debate. We're going to be hearing a lot more about it tonight, and then maybe we'll bring you back tomorrow to, to debate how things turned out. We certainly appreciate you coming Very in this good. morning. Thanks, Thank you Amy. both Thanks for, for your having me. Sure. sides this morning, and let's uh, talk right now about that meeting where you can go cast your uh, your input if you would like it's coming up at 5 30 this evening of course we're going to keep you posted on that let's send it over to ryan